Hi and welcome. Um, at this time we have a new setup of um, questions to answer and one of them is the situation where we have a block that is hanging from a string right here string and that the string is configured into a triangle and then it's attached to a board or from a ceiling uh, creating an angle alpha on one side and angle beta on the other side so it means that it's not uh, symmetry okay so it's not symmetry it is not an identical triangle or it's not identical on both sides so it means that the way the uh, configuration of the the strings are not identical from the left and on the right side so if you notice this is string number one and this is string number two in this kind of situation you are required to solve for the tension or to figure out the tension of the strings to be exact the tension of the two string which is attached to the ceiling um, first thing that we should understand is that this object is hanging from uh, from from a plane uh, therefore it is not moving at all so it's not going to be moving downward it's not going to move in sideways it's not going to move upward it's not going to move in any of the axis so definitely shouldn't be part of our uh, video files of dynamics because this is a static uh, condition so i would say that since this is static right away we can say that in this condition since it's not going to move the acceleration or there's no change in state of motion so it means from uh, static or from at rest or motionless state it will never move so the acceleration along the y-axis is zero and the acceleration along the x-axis is zero if that's the case then we can just say that the summation of forces in general will be equivalent to mass times zero or the summation of forces is considered to be zero as this the forces will be balanced okay, so it's not going to move okay so it's not going to change the state of motion so there's no acceleration to be considered so this is a balanced force or so equilibrium state of equilibrium so first step that we should consider here is of course we should draw our free body diagram so the first challenge is to draw a free body diagram where all forces will be uh, acting on at the same point okay so where will they intersect by looking at our illustration by looking at the setup because i'm looking for a different color pen so i can draw I would say that the forces intersect at this point. So our free body diagram will be analyzed at this point where all the strings are interconnected. So this is our X axis and this is our Y axis. So this is where the interconnection is. Okay, so the interconnection is right here. Okay, so interconnection is right here. So first thing that we should do is to draw a dot. And we all know that the object or the block do have a mass. So the first thing or the first um, first force that is acting on uh, the system is the force of gravity. Because of the weight, because of the mass of the object, which entails to be weight. So we have force of gravity, which is also equivalent to the weight of the object. And we can say that this is your... FG and then I would have another force which is maybe like this I would say that this is our first tension and then here's the second string okay. and then here we have the second string maybe like this we can have our second string right here okay so usually okay so i'm just going to give you some pointers over here usually force of tension is represented oops sorry for that 
is represented using the word or the symbol FD. Okay, so FD is force of tension. Force of tension or due to tension. Now, it's nice to indicate that that's the force of tension where T represents tension. But this time, there's more than just one tension. So the tendency is for us to use what? Force of tension, sub 1, or string number 1, and force of tension, number 2. Now, my suggestion, instead of using the subscript, because sometimes it is more complicated than to, un to remember the subscript, my suggestion is instead of using F sub T, we can always write in our solution saying that, okay, so let me just circle this one. So let's put instead, so instead, my suggestion is, to indicate let T be equivalent to tension force. And then we can say that T of 1 right here is the tension on string number 1, tension at 1, while T of 2 is tension at two. Okay, so tension of two, tension of one. So you're indicating that those are the tension. So now for me to complete my free body diagram, I would say this is tension number one and this is tension number two. So therefore my free body diagram is complete. I can move on with the next step and that is to figure out the tension on each point. So tension on each point. Okay, so tension on each point. So we can go ahead and um, start with our solution. And of course, as I have been showing you in the past or past videos, we should always start with our free body diagram. Do not use the actual free body diagram that you are showing as your solute as part of your solution but instead draw the free body diagram multiple times in order to have those um, analyzed during your calculation okay so first one that we have is the dot now my suggestion at this point is to just draw the imaginary x and y coordinate like this and then let's draw the force, which is force of gravity. So our force of gravity or weight is, is mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength. If you notice, I'm using the word gravitational field strength, G, it's because it's not moving anymore. Okay, so motion is not entailed in this kind of problem. So it's safe for us to say it's the weight, which is mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength. The next force that we have here is tension number one, which is right here. So T1, but we all know that T1 is not along the X, I forgot the label. So this is your X axis and this is your Y axis. So it's not along the X or Y axis, but instead it is at a certain angle. Okay, so it's a certain angle. So what I'm gonna do is to draw broken lines, dotted lines, to indicate that this is T sub one component of X, and this is T of two, or T sub one component of Y. Okay. So tension one component of Y and X. Okay. So just imagine if you use FT and then you have your X and Y, so there's subscript after subscript after subscript. So here, even though we can say that it is not uh, safe from subscript, but the lesser the subscript that we're using, the better for us, it's less complicated. Next, let's draw the second tension, which is tension number two. So if our tension number two is somewhere here, 
P of two. Now we have another triangle. And let's use the blue ink right here on the left side for number two to draw the component, the dotted lines. So this will be P sub two X. And this is P sub two Y. So now you have forces acting on it. Let me just zoom it in so you can see. Now, the thing is, what do you think is the angle? What angle is inside this triangle? Okay. So what is this angle? So just pay attention to your math class and they will explain to you why and why and why. Okay. So again, why and why? Why is it that this angle right here is the same as the angle when it's measured along the ceiling or where is it connected? So this angle right here is equivalent to this angle here. So now we can just use that this is your beta and this is your angle alpha. So pay attention in your math class as they explain to you why, okay, in the future, why is it that alpha and beta are, are uh, the angles from where the intersect of those strings happen and that's the same angle measured from the ceiling. Okay, or where it's attached. So you can always go back to your math class and review it. Oh, so knowing all this information, now let me just zoom back. Zoom out again, so we all know. Then we can say that for P sub 1 Y and P sub 2 X, at P sub 1 Y, and this is P sub 1 X. The angle is measured along the x-axis. Again, angle is measured along the x-axis like this. So it is not measured along the y-axis. So therefore, for x, we will use cosine, cosine theta, while for y, we will be using sine theta. Or not theta, but beta. I'm sorry, I got confused. So that is sine beta. So let's use that angle beta. Okay. So let's use the angle beta instead of theta. So that represents beta. So the angle inside on the right side. Now for tension two, tension the sub two x and tension of two sub y, the y component of tension number two. So it's the same concept that that is Tension 2, instead of using sine, since it's measured from the inside, or from the x, uh, x axis, so this will be cosine alpha, and then your y component is sine alpha. Sine and cosine. Yeah. Move on further. So we don't. We can just use a different force, uh, different uh, illustration or forces indicating as part of our solution. So first force, of course, is your F of G, which is along your Y axis, M of X, M of G. And then we have different forces acting. First one is uh, your green. I will just maintain the uh, same color. So this is P sub 1 X, which is just simply P of cosine beta. Okay. Now the Y component of it is going up, and that is P of 1 Y. So this will give us an angle of, or a function, p sub 1, don't forget the sub 1, sine beta. On the other side, okay, so on the other side, let's use the blue ink to represent p sub 2. So this will be P 
sub 2x, which is equivalent to T sub 2 cosine alpha. And then we have a small force going upward, which is our T sub 2 y. And that is T sub 2 sine alpha. So that is that arrow right there. So let me zoom it in so you could see it a little bit clearer. Now, we can proceed by analyzing the forces acting on both the x and y axis. First one, let's analyze the forces acting along the x axis, which is equivalent to zero at this time. Okay, so I can still work on the same same process that I've been doing in the past where it says m times acceleration in x but we already said earlier that there's no acceleration it's not moving or it doesn't change any um, state of motion so we can just say that the sum of all forces is equivalent to zero so there we go forces to the right is positive and forces to the left is negative so this will give us T sub 1, x minus T sub 2, x equals 0. So what does it mean? That those two forces, if I would write it down right here, that T sub 1, x is simply equivalent to T sub 2, x. So the magnitude are equal. It's just opposite direction. So for every action, there's always an equal opposite reaction, and that has something to do with Newton's third law of motion. There's no change in motion because the sum of all forces are equal. That's Newton's first law of motion where it says that an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by balance force, or an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by balance force. But in our case, it is balanced, so therefore it's not going to change the state of motion then it will stay the same as it is not moving. Now, so let's uh, work on summation of forces or analyze the forces acting along the y-axis, which is also equated to zero. Okay. So, which is also equated to zero. So, I can say that the summation of forces acting along y-axis is simply or equal to zero. So we can say that any forces going up is positive, anything going down is negative. So I can say that this is T sub 1, okay, T sub 1 y plus T sub 2 y minus F of G is equal to zero. Now if you add those two forces together, it should be equivalent to the force of gravity. If it's not equal to the force of gravity, if it's not equal to the force of gravity, what will happen? Then it will move upward or downward depending on which force is greater. Now, what are the value of T sub 1 and T sub 2? Okay, so, hmm. I just found out that T sub 1 and T sub 2 are the same. So they're equal, opposite direction. However, I know that T sub 1 is cos is a uh, T sub 1x is T sub is cosine beta and then T sub 2 is T sub 2 cosine alpha. So what I'm going to do is to plug in that information right here at this point so I can say that this 2 is simply T sub 1 what is x? That is cosine beta is equivalent to what is t sub 2x? That is cosine alpha. Right here, I also know, so let's say I wanted to solve for uh, one or two or what are some of the 
uh, information that I need to figure out. So now next is to change this. Okay, so let's change this one. We use the red one. So instead of using y, let's use d sub 1. And that is sine beta. plus d sub 2, by the way this is d sub 2, so d sub 2 sine alpha equals what is fg, that is mass times g. So now, why don't we plug in hmm, the value of t1 and t2, if we look at this one, well, I can express this, if I divide both sides by cosine beta, What's going to happen is t sub 1 is simply equivalent to t sub 2 cosine alpha over cosine beta. So that angle right here. Okay, so our next step, now we can plug in the value of t sub 1 in this equation. So this is our uh, value of t sub 1, so substitute it in this equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get an extra sheet of paper as we might not have enough space to complete the solution in this sheet. Okay. So allow me to get one. So let's place it here. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a, uh, since I'm not going to be drawing anything on this sheet, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a uh, clean white sheet of paper, unlined, okay, so no line, unruled, okay. Okay, so, substitute, so here's a procedure. Let's substitute D1 in the equation t sub 1 sine beta plus t of 2 sine alpha equals mg. Now what have been your problem? They said um, angle A, angle B, angle 1, angle 2. All you have to do is just change the beta and the alpha. That will be the same process. Okay. Same process, they just use different representation. Um, so uh, feel free to just change those those symbols into, or Greek letters into the alphanumeric letters, and then you will have your same solutions. Okay, now let's plug in the values of T sub 1, and that T sub 1 is simply equivalent to T sub 2. So that is T sub 2 cosine alpha and cosine beta plus t sub 2 sine alpha equals mg and of course I forgot to put this one over here to insert let's insert forgot to put it in sorry that was my bad so sine beta okay don't forget the sine beta because that's t1 sine beta so we just replace t1 by this value sine beta plus t2 sine alpha okay, so sine over cosine okay sine over cosine what is that sine over cosine function okay sine over cosine okay so sine over cosine so for us, let's just plug it in first. So now I have this one, which is sine beta multiplied by cosine alpha divided by cosine beta. In your math class, we all know what is sine over cosine beta. Plus T sub 2 sine alpha 
m times g. But since we all know that sine beta over cosine beta is simply the tangent of angle beta. So now we can say that this is tangent beta multiplied by cosine alpha plus T2 sine alpha equals M of G. So now we can pull out T sub 2, which is common to both sides of the equation. So I can say, oh, from on the left side of the equation, I can factor out T2. So now I have tangent beta cosine alpha plus sine alpha is equivalent to m of g. So now I can say that t2, if you divide both sides of the equation by this, it is simply equivalent to tangent beta times cosine alpha plus sine beta. So that will be the value of our t sub 2. So that's t sub 2 in terms of m and the given angles. How do we solve for t sub 1 then? All we have to do this time is to substitute the value of t sub 1. Okay, okay so now we have our t sub 2 over here. Okay, so what is the value of, of t sub 1 in terms of mg and the given angles? Okay, so just like what we did earlier. So now, let's get back to this paper. What if I want to use t sub 2 instead of, of uh, t sub 1? Then I'm just going to say, okay, so from the same equation like this, further, I can express t sub 2 as t sub 1 cosine beta divided by cosine alpha. Using the same equation right here, let's plug in the value of t sub 2 and simplify it again. Okay. Now let's use a different color ink. Hopefully it will fit in this sheet of paper. So let's plug in, it says substitute t sub 2 in our first equation on the equation t sub 1 sine beta plus t sub 2 sine alpha equals m of g. This time let's copy down t sub 1 sine of beta plus t of 2 now let's plug in the value of t sub, so instead of using t sub 2, let's use this bad boy over here, which is t sub 1. So instead of t sub 2, let's put t sub 1, and that is cosine beta over cosine alpha multiplied by sine beta. So now we have our sine beta right here. Okay, equals mass times g. Earlier we were able to say oh sine beta over cosine beta oh that is that is equivalent to tangent. But this time you have two different angles so be careful do not use this. Okay so do not use do not convert this into tangent because sine over cosine is tangent if you have the same angle so it means we're looking at two different sides two different triangles two different angles here so now let's simplify this okay what is common for both sides of the equation and that is t1 sine beta So that will give us 1 plus cosine beta 
over cosine alpha that is equivalent to m of g. Okay. So I factor out sine b and t sub 1 right outside. I cancel it out from this part over here. So that's 1. Now all I have to do is make sure that I just leave sine by itself over here on this one side of the equation. And that will give us an answer of t sub 1 is simply equivalent to sine beta. I'll, I'll write my denominator first. 1 plus cosine beta over cosine alpha. And this is m of g. So these are your answers. These are your procedures. Now, what if during the test, what if during the test, you were given the angles instead of using, let's say, let me just move my pictures right here or my video. Instead of using alpha, instead of using beta, you have 30 and this one is 60 degrees. So all you have to do is just change the angle into the numbers, the angles itself, the value. And then if you were given the mass, just plug in the mass. Here you go. So you have this solution. All you have to do is just plug in those numbers and you will have the answer. If it's a multiple choice, it's faster for us. Since we have already uh, set up the solution instead of coming up with all of this calculation which took us about 30 minutes or more because of course I still have to explain it step by step but once you have done this several times it could be faster and then if you're not talking or explaining your step like what I'm doing it will not be as you know as lengthy as you thought it's gonna take so next question will be a similar setup of uh, of an object but it's going to be a different configuration